precocious puberty in boys is uncommon as compared to the condition observed in girls but it has significant connotation in the form that peripheral precocious puberty is much more common in boys as compared to girls and the likelihood of an organic pathology if it's a simple precocious puberty is much higher in a boy with precocious puberty so although precocious puberty is less common in boys one needs to keep this in mind importantly that this may be the only marker of a sinister disease so we'll focus on the when why and how of precocious puberty so when do we consider precocious puberty for that we have to really evaluate the pubertal staging of a child and uh, although there are different stages the two testicular volumes which are very important in this regards are the testicular volume 4 which means that the child has entered into puberty and the growth spurt typically occurs by a pubertal volume of around 10 ml the usual age of onset of puberty is around 12 years and it takes approximately 6 years for complete sexual maturity to happen. The most important parameter to assess in terms of diagnosing puberty and to classifying precocious puberty in a boy is the testicular volume and one needs to really compare it with an orchidometer to get an appropriate result. So if you have a volume of 4 ml it means that the child has entered puberty that is there is enough trigger which has come from both LH and FSH to cause testicular volume to increase. In central or gonadotropin dependent precocious puberty where both LH and FSH levels are elevated both the Leydig as well as Sertoli cell size increase and therefore we have pubertal testis along with precocious puberty. In conditions of peripheral precocious puberty where the source of androgens are not the testes, the LH and FSH levels are suppressed, so therefore testes will remain prepubertal around 1 to 2 ml while the child will show definite features of precocious puberty classically seen in the setting of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. In apparent LH excess states, which are characterized by increased activity of LH in the setting of uh, HCG setting tumor or testotoxicosis, the Leydig cell compartment of the testis will enlarge while the Sertoli cells will not be enlarged because they are dependent upon FSH secretion. So in these conditions the testicular volume will be slightly more than what is observed in congenital hyperplasia but much less compared to central precocious puberty because Sertoli cells account for around two-thirds of the testicular mass. So assessment of testicular volume therefore is the crux as far as differentiating the different causes of precocious puberty in boys is concerned. So when do we call it precocious? If we have onset which is more than two standard deviations score for the particular ethnicity standards and in most cases if it occurs before 10 years of age one would consider precocious puberty in a boy. So the next question which comes to our mind is why does precocious puberty happen? And we are all aware regarding the whole control pathway of the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis in which kispeptin is the central regulator of puberty which regulates GnRH which stimulates pituitary to produce LH and FSH and LH in boys acts on the Leydig cell to increase testosterone production. So only LH excess can also cause precocious puberty in boys in contradistinction to a situation where both LH and FSH stimulation is absolutely important to undergo puberty in girls. So therefore conditions like HCG setting tumor would cause precocious puberty in boys but would not cause precocious puberty in girls because FSH levels are not elevated. So from this clinical perspective we can broadly divide precocious puberty in boys into central precocious puberty or peripheral precocious puberty. Central or gonadotropin dependent precocious puberty typically will have a relatively a uh, slower rate of growth will be characterized by pubertal testicular volume while peripheral precocious puberty is often very rapid and associated with small testicular volume. Central precocious puberty is still large number of children will have idiopathic cause but the likelihood of finding organic pathology is much more in boys compared to girls including tumor, CNS insults. The important causes of peripheral precocious puberty include testicular tumors, 
or a condition which is known as apparent LH excess or gonadotropin independent precocious puberty or uh, testotoxicosis where the LH receptor is constitutionally active without the ligand being present. Adrenal causes are important particularly if it's congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So this typically presents with a child who has simple virilizing pattern with the pigmentation, pre-puberty testicular volume, significant bone age advancement, tall stature and would result in severely compromised final height if we do not do appropriate management. Adrenal tumors can also present with rapid progression. These children may have hypertension along with precocious puberty if the mineralocorticoid secretion is increased. Hypertension and peripheral precocious puberty in boys is also observed in the setting of 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency wherein the DOC and precursors of uh, aldosterone who have potent mineralocorticoid action accumulate and cause increased levels. So now we know the when and why of precocious puberty in boys. The next question is how do we go forward in terms of evaluation and management of a child with precocious puberty. And in this regard, hormonal assessment is important as far as confirmation is concerned. And for this, ideally we should use LH, FSH and testosterone levels. And we should remember that gonadotrophins do have a tendency of pulsatile secretion. So in these conditions, we should always have a pooled sample taken 15 minutes apart. So we'll have samples at 0, 15 and 30 minutes, which will then be pooled to have a single result so that the pulsatility is done. Testosterone is a good marker of start of puberty. If the levels are going beyond 30, we should think of a possibility of puberty happening. With regards to changes as far as LH and FSH is concerned, we know that FSH levels are less reliable indicators of precocious puberty while LH levels do result in significant elevation during stages 3 and 4. So LH is the best marker and levels which go beyond 0.6 are considered to be pubertal. In individuals where the levels are intermediate, GnRH stimulation tests will help us confirm the diagnosis. So the next issue is whether it is a central or a peripheral precocious puberty and the key thing we should point towards a peripheral precocious puberty is that if we have a very rapid course of progression, if there is a discordant pattern which is happening and the testicular volume is small, it is indicative of peripheral precocious puberty. And of course, these children will have low basal and GnRH stimulated LH and FSH levels. Testicular volume, as discussed, is the most important parameter to look at in a child with peripheral precocious puberty or a central precocious puberty. If we have pubertal testicular volume which is symmetrically enlarged, it is indicative of central precocious puberty. If we have prepubertal small size testes, it indicates peripheral precocious puberty, a classical case of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. If on the other hand, the testicular volume is intermediate in between these two conditions and the child actually has precocious puberty, one must think that it's the Leydig cells which are actually working and it is secretary of HCD trading tumor or testotoxicosis. And finally, if there is a unilateral enlargement in testicular size, one should think of a possibility of a testicular tumor causing peripheral precocious puberty. So this is a four-year-old boy who clearly has precocious puberty and what do you see? Is the child having peripheral or central precocious puberty? What we are seeing is the child actually has increased penile length and testicular volume is also increased. This is a classical case of central precocious puberty with high LH and FSH levels and advanced bone age an MRI was suggestive of hypothalamic hematoma, which actually is not a brain tumor. It's actually normal tissue in the abnormal pace, does not require any surgical intervention. The treatment is largely limited to treatment of precocious puberty. Five-year-old boy, and we can see that there is significant uh, puberty. And what about the testicular volume, which appears to be small? So this is suggestive of a peripheral precocious puberty. And the most important condition that we have to look at in this condition is to look at LH, FSH, which are low, confirming the diagnosis, and 17 hydroxyprogesterone, which is high, suggestive of a diagnosis of congenital adrenal hyperplasia in this regard, and the CTR suggestive of adrenal hyperplasia. 
Again, a five-year-old boy with clear-cut precocious puberty, but the testicular volume is again not very small, but it's smaller compared to what would you have expected with the level of puberty. And uh, LHF fish levels were very low. HCG levels were very high. This is a HCG secreting tumor, which will result in a clinical picture of peripheral precocious puberty. This condition can be diagnosed on a bedside evaluation if we do what is a urine SCG test, which will pick up the test in this regards. And this shall actually turn out to be a HCG secreting germinoma, which was the reason as far as the precocious puberty is concerned. So, to evaluate a boy with the precocious puberty, look at the LH FSH levels. If these levels are prepubertal, look at adrenal imaging. While if the levels are pubertal, we should definitely do a MRI head. So, in contradistinction to girls, where only girls who have precocious puberty before six years of age require neuroimaging, all boys who have precocious puberty, with central precocious puberty, should have a MRI head done. If the adrenal imaging is normal, Look at 17 OHP and HCG to make a diagnosis of congenital adrenal hyperplasia or HCG secreting tumor. If all these evaluations are normal, it is suggestive of gonadotropin independent precocious puberty, which is diagnosed based upon genetic analysis. So, how do we manage these children for central precocious puberty? GNRH analogs are extremely effective in therapy. For congenital adrenal hyperplasia, steroid should be given, but if there is a secondary triggered precocious puberty, these children will benefit with the use of GNRH analogs. So the key messages which have to be given is that testicular volume is the most important part of assessment. Peripheral precocious puberty is more common in boys compared to girls and neuroimaging should be considered if it is a central precocious puberty. Think HCG secreting tumor in the setting of peripheral precocious puberty.